Okay, uh, for this tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, the arrangement view uh, for the first time because we're going to be looking at uh, files, uh, tracks that are already, you know, WAV files or MP3s or just editing, uh, say you have a song that you really enjoy that you want to edit, you want to remix, um, anything like that. Um, and the arrangement view uh, would be the thing, uh, the way to go. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a uh, a song here that uh, I made using some some uh, mini loops um, and as you can tell when you click on it um, you'll see that it starts playing down here in this preview window um, down here and it shows you the waveform it shows you uh, where you are in the song and stuff like that um, this is really handy but can also get really uh, annoying in my opinion when uh, you're sifting through a bunch of different songs uh, can kind of bog down if you have an older computer. So um, you can see that there's another uh, blue headphone uh, icon right next to the preview window. If you click on that, it'll uh, deactivate the auto preview uh, option. Uh, if you click it again, it'll start over. Um, you can also uh, deactivate the preview by just going somewhere else uh, in the window, like uh, going to a different folder. But uh, um, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to click and drag this song. As you can see the waveform will come up in the arrangement view. Um, and you just let go. And this song is relatively short, so it didn't take uh, very long to um, to analyze it. Um, but if you have a longer track, um, you'll see that uh, it'll kind of be grayed out, it'll be shaded, it'll be transparent. Um, and that's because it is still analyzing the track, it's figuring out uh, what you're putting in the arrangement view. So it could take a little while longer, but uh, in this case it did not. So, um, Big thing you want to do um, is if you want to change the beat per minute of the song, um, you know, when you click and drag into the arrangement view, it'll automatically um, warp it if you, had it if you have it set in your settings uh, to warp. Um, warping is uh, basically Ableton's uh, you know, um, way of analyzing the beat per minute and altering it to whatever the uh, beat per minute is that's up here in the top left. So, um, currently we have it at 130 beat per minute. So, um, If you want to turn warping off, uh, you can come down to the editor down here in the bottom and the, uh, the yellow button that says warp, you just click on that and it will return it to its original beat per minute. Sometimes uh, when you are when warping is turned on automatically, uh, it will clip the song here in the very beginning to match up uh, the beat per minute. What we can do is um, if we go down here in the editor at the very bottom, uh, you'll see if you hover over this picture of the waveform at the bottom, see a magnifying glass with uh, appears as your cursor. If you click and you go up or down, you'll see that you are able to zoom in on the waveform in the editor. And that's really handy because uh, if you're really getting into uh, the nitty gritty and you're trying to edit a track, it um, can be really difficult if you're uh, if you can't zoom in on a waveform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna while I'm clicking and holding, moving to the left so I can get to the beginning of the track. And as you can see, when I click um, when I put this track in the arrangement view, it did just that. It clipped the very 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 beginning. Um, the way to fix that is uh, if you go up here in the top, you'll see. Uh, the start marker, it's right beneath the loop bar. Uh, it's another little gray arrow. Uh, and you'll see that your cursor will turn into a little uh, start marker. If you click on the arrow, and for in this case drag it to the left, you'll see that we can set it back to, uh, to where the song actually begins. Um, so we'll do that and we'll make sure... Uh, let's see here. There we go. Just as an example, if we hadn't have uh, moved that, it would have just started one beat ahead. Um, so I'll put that back. Um, if you want to work on a particular spot in in the wave, uh, in, in the track, once again, you can use the loop bar. Um, you can just put it over the start time and say, I only wanted to work on the first couple of notes. Um, I would set it by clicking and dragging both sides to the preferred length to uh, the area that I want to work on. And you'll want to come up here to the top here 
to the loop switch and this basically activates that loop bar on and off you want to click on it and you want to make sure that it's yellow you'll want to uh, you want to hit the loop button here on the uh, in the editor so that you're telling Ableton that you do in fact want to loop it uh, so we'll hit play. and you can see once we hit that loop button it did in fact uh, loop so and that'll go on forever um, so just going to hit stop gonna turn deactivate the loop and we'll also tell it that we do not want to loop anymore so um, but one of the new things um, that we haven't covered yet is uh, the mixer um, and you can see right underneath the uh, the name of the of the track uh, it, these drop down windows and you can go to the mixer uh, and this gives you some different options if you go to the window underneath uh, the mixer drop down there's a second drop down and you'll see that it gives you some options such as track panning track volume um, I haven't really dabbled with any of the other ones other than uh, track volume and panning so I'm just going to select the track volume and you'll see this red line comes up on the uh, on the waveform and basically this allows you to alter the track volume uh, within uh, the arrangement view. If you want to name your track uh, anything specifically you can see it's just set to the default you know one audio currently. You can always right click on it and click rename or hit control R that's the uh, hotkey. And you can see that it uh, shades it you can just uh, name it just name it the same name as the track, hit enter. That way, and it's very important to do that because that will be able to, you know, you'll be able to follow your, your tracks more closely. You'll be able to, uh, it's much more organized so you don't get confused as easily. Um, just like we had down here in the bottom, we had um, this uh, for the track. Uh, we could zoom in. I forgot to mention, you can also do that up here uh, in the arrangement view. You see, we get that magnifying cursor again. If you go up, you can zoom out all the way so you see the whole track, or you can zoom real in so you see the waves um, forming. Uh, you can get real close for editing. Um, and you can go back to beginning if you just double click. And it'll go back to the, uh, to the zoomed out uh, mode. So, um, as far as uh, cutting and pasting and you know, altering the track, um, if you see, if you just click on a specific line, you'll see this orange line showing you where you are positionally uh, in the wave. And uh, the hotkey for, for cutting a wave is Control E. And as you can see, it splits the wave in two. Uh, you'll see that it's named twice. And you'll see that there's kind of like a, um, you know, kind of almost like a crease, uh, like a line separating these. And if you just click going to the right a little bit, you'll see that it has, in fact, cut it. And just zoom back out here. Just click and drag this away. Um, if you click on the uh, this select, you know this cut portion, uh, you can always either Control C or you know go to the window and hit Copy, um, and that'll copy the selection. It's just I mean it's exactly like a uh, you know word processing or you know any any basic uh, computer program is going to have a cut, copy, and paste. So if you have if you've cut a track and you're, you know, going along and you realize that you might not have cut it in the right spot, you don't, you don't think it's going to work for you. Instead of, you know, undoing all the, what you've done and, you know, hitting Control Z a bunch of times and hoping that, you know, it works for you, you can go to the end of this clip and you'll see we have our bracket uh, cursor again. If you click and drag, you'll see that it, it continues the original way, uh, track because Ableton saves it in its memory here and it won't lose you know we can trim it all the way to there so we just had the first couple of notes but let's say we don't want that and we actually want it to be longer you know we forgot something if you just click and drag and it'll still be there so I think that's really handy our next tutorial is going to be um, taking two tracks in arrangement view and uh, trying to line them up I think we'll look into warping a little bit more uh, and show you just how that works and we'll also have a tutorial uh, just uh, showing you some helpful links some, uh, some websites uh, that I use personally um, I'm sure they won't have a problem with me giving them free advertising so um, and I think that'll just about wrap it up for uh, the intro to Ableton so I hope you've enjoyed it so far and uh, we'll We'll wrap it up here, so thanks for watching.